Hi, I'm Chase Garbarino, and this is the Boston Obeat. Lucky for you, today, you've only got me. You've got two of me. So, uh, double the fun, and uh, Gomer is, we had his wedding this past weekend, as many of you know from our uh, last week's shoot. We had a great time at the, at the wedding. Biggest feedback from the wedding was that I probably got voted wedding MVP. Um, Gomer described the groomsmen's outfits as white lightning, which I think we have some footage of. And uh, I was really just killing it on the dance floor. Let's get started. Well, obviously we're having some problem, and it sometimes happens with live television. Let's talk about Robocop. Oh, hell no. <laughs> we'll do it live. F it. The big one today, uh, since Gomer's not here, we're going to do some hard-hitting things. Uh, the NEVCA, New England Venture Capital Association, today announced their Fair Employment Alliance. Now, the NEVCA for a while has been trying to get non-competes banned in Massachusetts. To date, they have been unsuccessful. Uh, the launch of the FEA, which you can go on fairemploymentalliance.org, I believe is the domain, uh, you can check it out. But what they're trying to do is mobilize people against non-competes. Part of the issue that we've run into so far uh, in getting non-competes banned is that most people think that non-competes only affect startups. However, about a year ago, Colette Buser, who is a University of Richmond sophomore from Wellesley, uh, testified in front of the State House. Now, she was a camp counselor during the summer, and she ended up losing her job because she had signed a non-compete with a competing camp. We're talking about an hourly wage worker being prevented from working here in the Commonwealth because she might, God forbid, steal trade secrets about arts and crafts or ghost stories. Protecting intellectual property, which the people who are for non-competes, they claim that's the reason to do it. Protecting IP, my ass. Now, lots of folks on both sides of the aisle here in Massachusetts, Republican and Democrat, talk a lot when they campaign about supporting entrepreneurs as well as supporting people who have, are in the lower income bracket. Now, it's not just uh, hurting startups, these non-competes, but you have hourly wage workers that can't move freely amongst jobs. Now, who needs a free market of labor more than people who are working on hourly wages? I would push back and say this isn't just for the startup community, but for people who are trying to find upward mobility within the economy. And now you wonder if hourly wage workers are being hurt by this, who in their right mind would actually support non-competes? House Speaker Robert DeLeo and the CEO of the Associated Industries of Massachusetts. They are the ones who have been pushing to keep non-competes. So when you think about the legislation, non-competes are really only helping a few people who are execs at our biggest corporations in the state. When you look out west, when they talk about protecting innovation with their IP, Companies in the West and West Coast in California have outpaced us in innovation and they don't have non-competes. So the whole thing makes no sense. We need to lobby and we need to get organized and we need to figure out how to get rid of non-competes in Massachusetts. Making moves this week, uh, Apple and in ode to my good friend, uh, Greg Gomer, T-Swift as he would refer to her. Now, Apple recently announced their Spotify competitor, Apple Music, uh, and they said the first three months of the streaming service were going to be free. Uh, Taylor wrote a uh, post on her Tumblr, and she basically complained that uh, having the service free for the first three months and not paying the artists really hurt startup artists. Apple turned on a dime and said that they were going to uh, make the first three months paid. And they backtracked a little too quickly. It's not a big movement yet, but I am joining the conspiracy theorists who believe that the whole thing was concocted from the beginning. Conspiracy theory, I read. Google it. In the community, this week, and actually for the whole summer, which is awesome, Akamai, as well as TripAdvisor and a number of other large companies here, have partnered up with Girls Who Code. Now, Girls Who Code is a non-for-profit that tries to engage getting uh, high school aged and I believe maybe middle schoolers into writing code. And when you look at the numbers of how many females are getting involved in engineering, it's one of the biggest problems that the tech community has. So Akamai will be partnering and hosting the program, as well as TripAdvisor, Facebook, Google, 
and a number of other companies. This is the largest summer for Girls Who Code. They have 60 programs reaching over 1,200 girls, which is awesome. That's up from the numbers last summer. So if you don't know about them, check it out and think about hosting one next summer for your company. I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. Unwanted feedback this week. We've literally been shooting the show for over a year, so still don't get how you're not picking up on unwanted. But um, I've been hearing from a lot of people about my hat. Uh, I did not wear a hat interviewing Steve Pagliuca at the State of Innovation, and I took a lot of flack for that for some reason. I'm not wearing a hat today uh, because I didn't feel like it. I'm kind of amazed at uh, how many people have told me that I look like an idiot without a hat on. So uh, thank you for that feedback. I'll keep it in mind. And one more bit of news this week. Um, Greg cried a little bit at his wedding. That might have made me cry a little bit. So it was kind of like a domino effect, but he cried a little bit. It's not about me, it's about him. So congrats, buddy. Great wedding. I had fun. Thanks for coming out. You can be a real son of a bitch, man. Let's do I go here? Do I go here? Do I go here? Do I go here? Thanks for coming out.